worst it's been for weeks. Oh. You mean you're back? Aye. Oh, it's always bad during the cold weather. Honestly, no one knows how I suffer. Don't they? Hey, You ought to get Archie to rub it for you. Well, that's just it. He does. He normally does, you see, Lorna. Last thing every night. But not last night. Oh, no. He's off enjoying himself. Driving her ladyship and yon German down to Glasgow. Staying in some fancy hotel, no doubt. Never a thought for me. Mm, yes, yeah, always dangerous, that. What is? When a man's away from home. How do you mean? Well, you know, all the temptations of the big city and everything. Maybe he found another back to rub last night. You don't think? Oh, I mean, he wouldn't. <laughs> Not really, Mrs. Archie. In fact, I doubt it very much indeed. All the same. Here, I don't suppose you know what a tell they're staying at. Maybe if I rang. Uh, no, I don't think that would be a very good idea. Anyway, Mr. McIntyre will be in shortly. It might be a better idea if you finished in here before he arrives. Hey, what? Mr. McIntyre? Oh, I, well, I'd better be getting on then. Oh, oh hello, Mr. McIntyre. Morning, Mr. McIntyre. Morning, Mr. McIntyre. You're Morning. early. Mm. Something wrong? Hey, ah, just this Andy Semple business. I mean, it's not just the stolen wood and the money. Now I have to worry about his wife and his children who were left behind in the rush. They're sitting on our property, so it's my problem. Oh, look, there's really no need. I can manage perfectly well. No, nonsense, they're heavy. Too heavy for you to be humping around. Well, Jimmy away, I think you need an early morning helper. Any word, incidentally? What about? From Jimmy. Oh, he phoned last night. I told you he's helping Ken pick up some stuff. I think he's really enjoying being away from me for a day or two. Aye. Young kids are all the same. Can't wait to leave home. Oh, he'll be back. Yes. That, uh, that is possible, you know, that there'll come a day when uh, he won't want to come back. Oh, yes. Well, Jimmy is growing up, isn't he? I don't suppose he'll want to hang around here forever. No, I don't suppose he will either, but I know he'll think about it very carefully. Aye, but there are parts of you that want to hang on to him, Isabel. But one day, you'll cut loose and you won't like it, whatever you say. Listen, Dave. Oh, uh, I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Were you wanting something, Maggie? Oh, just my sweets, Isabel. I need energy. Oh, I don't suppose you've heard. Probably not. Andy Semple at the sawmill. 25 pence, Maggie, please. He's raided the safe, taken all the money, left his wife and children and everything. Oh, aye. And just how do you know that, then, Maggie? I suppose he told you before he did it. I just keep my ears to the ground, Mr. Blair. There's not much goes on here that I don't get to hear about. Oh, but that's just it, isn't it, Maggie? You know, there's a fine distinction between what you hear and what you actually know. The difference between truth and malicious gossip. What are you suggesting, David Blair? Oh, I'm suggesting nothing. But I remember that you were the one who first spread those stories about my brother after that young lassie was murdered. Well, I, I wasn't so far wrong, was I? Now, that's enough, the pair of you. 25 pence, please, Maggie. Morning, all. Oh. Hello, hello, Bob. Bob. Well, you'll have heard about Andy Semple then, have you, Bob? Oh, I ran off with the money from the safe, so they say. The whole village is talking about it. Well? God, you make me sick. The lot of you. A village full of gossiping old women. What was that all about? Congratulations, Maggie. You must be starving, the pair of you. Out since five o'clock this morning and nothing to eat. Oh, I don't mind a late breakfast, Mrs. Laughlin. When you're out early working hard like that, you get a good appetite. Oh, nonsense, Alice. Nonsense. It's not good for you to be out in the cold and working and with nothing in your stomach. Now, tomorrow, you'll be sure to get me up and I'll get breakfast ready for the pair of you before you go out. And you, my lad, should know better than to sit down at the table with your hands filthy like that. Ah, oh, mother. 
That's lovely. Well, no, I, I always thought I brought you up to have better manners than that. Thanks. What for? Helping like this. I'm not looking for thanks, Dougal. I enjoy it. Aye, yeah, all the same. Yeah, you can stay here if you like. I mean, if you want to. I... Uh, I don't know, Dougal. It's... Uh, well, just because I've given up my job, it, it doesn't mean I expect you to keep me. Oh, well, it's up to you, of course. But if you do want to stay here, then it's all right with me. I do appreciate it, you know. Your help and everything. Isabel? Uh, coming! Hello there. Oh, it's you, Kate. I was just bringing through some bread from the back. I thought you deserted the ship. No, not me. And of yes. course, with Jimmy being away, I've got to work that wee bit harder. Eh? What will you do if this water skiing idea of his gets off the ground? Oh, I'll manage. I managed while he was at the school, after all. I might find I need somebody in part time, but to be quite honest, I don't really think I need bother about it at the moment. You don't think you'll have much success then? Well, not really mean that, but uh, whatever it is, it'll take time to organise. Old Jimmy's always full of the bright ideas, but they don't always come to anything. <laughs> Still, he is clever. I wouldn't like to think of him ending his days in here. Oh, I'm sure you've got nothing to worry about with Jimmy. Well, it's a mother's job to worry, isn't that what they say? <laughs> now, what can I do for you? I've been meaning to ask you if you'd order a couple of nursing magazines for me. Mm -hmm. It'd be more reliable getting them through you than having them sent up. That's no trouble at all. You just give me their names. Well, I've written them down oh, here. Oh, fine. I suppose I ought to be keeping up with what's going on in the great big world of medicine. You're feeling a bit isolated up here. Oh, I don't mind that, and I, I do see some of my colleagues every once in a while. It's just that a lot of my time is spent jollying my patients along, and sometimes I feel as if I could do with a bit of cheering up myself. Oh, well, you drop in here any time. You're always welcome. Oh, thanks, Isabel. I promise I won't bore you with too many bedside stories. <laughs> Actually, for some of my regulars, like old Mrs. Robertson, for instance, I'm about the only visitor she gets in the week. Of course, that's the same for a lot of old folk in the cities as well. Mm-hmm. Just wish I could do more, but I can't leave the shop, you know. I think they're always glad to see Jimmy when he takes up their messages. Oh, I didn't know he did that. Well, I just had a handful. You know, the ones that can't get out much. Oh, it's the least we can do. I mean, they've all been good customers in that time. You know, I never did take the sample much. He was a shifty sort of bloke, didn't you think so? Oh, you can never tell with people. Not when you don't really know them. I heard he'd been juggling the books. Oh? Who says? Oh, folk in the estate, down in the village. And how would they know? Well, one gets around. God, it's amazing, isn't it? What is? Well, just how in Glendarach a man is always guilty until he's proven innocent. Well, hello, stranger. Hello, Lorna. Have you seen my mother? She's gone to Glasgow with Mr Langerman. Oh, I called last night. I suppose that's why I get no reply. I don't know when she's coming back. Are you, uh, staying? I suppose so. Sorry. Oh, it's you, Fiona. Back again. Like a bad penny. His master's voice is Ian. Uh, he's got Bob Taylor in with him. I'll be tomorrow when the boat will be back from the repair. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello there, John. Caught any poachers recently? Ah, uh, well, maybe. That's why I'm here, Alan. Huh? One of the lads has just seen that grey van again. Where? About a mile up from the Lachlan's place. What grey van is this, then? It's been seen around the estate half a dozen times in the last week or so. John thinks there might be sheep stealers. Well, there's a couple of ewes missing. Oh, that's just it, though, John. It'll be after the lambs, and it's too early for that. Oh, yes, except that the missing ewes are due for lambing any time now. Makes sense, doesn't it? Lift the ewe before she lambs, and you could have several sheep for the price of one. Well, you're going to have to put a stop to it pretty damn quick if you want volunteers no, to I go just after hold them. on, you're too busy. We don't know there's any connection between this grey van and the missing sheep. I mean, it's not unusual to lose a couple of sheep in the river at this time of year. You could set up a night patrol, maybe catch them in the act. Why wait for tonight? We know where they are now. How about it, Alan? Aye, all right, John. I'll get my coat. Kiss while you're dancing 
Mrs. Archie, I wasn't expecting to find anyone in here. Hello, Fiona. I wasn't expecting anyone to be coming in either. Been staying with your father, have you? Who told you that? Well, your mother said you came down to Edinburgh for a few days. Nice man, your father. Nice man. Pity about your mum and him. Yes. A solicitor, isn't he? Actually, he's an advocate, Mrs. Archie. Well, whatever. Oh, I'll bet he cuts a real fine figure in the courtroom. With his dark gown and his wig and all. So is this you back, Fiona? Doesn't it look like it? Mm, there's no way like home, eh? No, I don't suppose there is. But shunting backwards and forwards between Mummy and Daddy's flat isn't quite what I'd call home. Is uh, Mr. Archie around? No, he's gone to Glasgow with your mother and Mr. Langerman. Thought he might have helped me upstairs with my case. Oh, well, I would give you a hand, Fiona, but my back's been terrible. I might just get married. Now, that would please them, wouldn't it? Okay. You're back home again? God, if just one more person says that. Ah, oh, sorry. Where are you off to now, then? I'm not off anywhere. I couldn't wait to get out of Glendarroch. Once I got out, I couldn't wait to get back. Awkward, aren't I? A woman's privilege, Fiona. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too, Kay. It's quite funny. I just saw Lorna and Mrs. Archie. It's not good to see them. It takes time to know where your heart is. Well, I'm not quite sure yet. But until I find out where it is, I'll keep it here. Yes, sir. All right. Mm-hmm. I'll tell him you called. Bye. Lorna, is Alan in? Oh, I'm afraid not, Kay. He went off with John Crawford about half an hour ago, looking for sheep stealers. Sheep stealers? Mm. Oh. So you've no idea when you'll be back then? Oh, could be any time. Okay. Well, will you tell him I dropped in then? Sure. Is there something wrong, Kay? Uh, no, uh, I just feel a bit down, that's all. If there's something on your mind, do you want to talk about it? I'm not sure what it is, Lorna. I just sometimes wonder if all this is worth it. Well, that doesn't sound like you, Kay. Oh, for heaven's sake, sit down, will you? Thanks. I suppose it's this place, really. Glendarroch. When you're an outsider, it's not all that easy to fit in. Oh, I know what you mean. I've been through it all myself. Sometimes I still feel as though I've not been fully accepted. And I've been here quite a bit longer than you. <laughs> That's funny. What is? I've never really thought of you as an outsider. You seem to be so at home here. As if you'd always belonged to Glendarroch. In with the bricks. Oh, not quite. Well, it wasn't that easy coming here for me. Before I got divorced, I used to work for a shipping line. And then afterwards, well, I just felt I needed a complete change. I saw this job advertised, applied for it, and here I am. It took quite a bit of getting used to, but now I love it. It just takes time. <laughs> I suppose so. It's just that sometimes I wonder if coming here was maybe a mistake. Oh, don't get me wrong. 
It's not that I'm missing the city or anything like that. It's just that I did have more friends at the Western than I have patients here. It is hard for a newcomer to make close friends. Sometimes I feel as if I'm getting nowhere fast. With Alan? As obvious as that, eh? Oh, no, of course not. But I know what you mean. You see, I got to know him very well, very quickly, when we met in Glasgow. But up here, it is different. He's a very private man, is Alan McIntyre. How about some lunch? Come on, John. I think we're wasting our time here. Hold it. Aye, it's them all right. At least it's the grey van. Oh, I see them. About two miles up the road, past the falls. I see it. Must have been hiding behind the rocks all this time. What do you think? Well, I think we could cut them off up the Glen Road, if we hurry. Might as well find out once and for all. Dougal, did you see a grey coloured van pass this way? Aye, just a minute ago. You must have passed it back there. Uh, they must have taken the back road. Oh, damn! 